Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Fixer Upper Reno Friday Speed Reno show that I doesn't really have a name anymore. Um, and this week I decided that I hate myself a lot, uh, more than usual, because I am doing an abandoned mansion. And oh yes, this is a mansion. Um, I haven't renoed it yet. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> it's ambitious, yes, but I, I really want to do it because first of all, this place is gorgeous. At least from the pictures, it's gorgeous. Anyway, it is by Mart, Mart, Marta, Martafine? Is that what that says? I'm blind. Martafine, I think so. Um, and they write, Bob and Clara uh, Mansfield, wow, good last name, packed up as much as they could and left their huge mansion to rot and decay. Um, where they went, no one knows. This mansion is all that is left, seemingly untouched by everything but time. Can you fix it? I don't know. <laughs> We'll see. Um, why don't we jump right into it and see if I can fix it. Okay, so here is the glorious mansion itself. Um, it is amazing. Whoops, okay. Uh, it is beautiful. It's on a 64 by 64 lot, so you know it's big when it's on a 64 by 64 lot. Um, the biggest lot in the game. I have it placed in Windenburg, which I don't know if it's going to stay here, but I don't know. Where is the other 64 by 64 lot? I know there's two in here. Um, anyway, this is the house. It is perfection, to be honest. It is just like, look at the back of it. I know I don't usually run out or fly through this way, but it is just like pure glory. Um, we can get into the house. Okay, can you sp speed up here? Speed up camera. What are you doing? All right, is that as fast as it can go? All right, anyway, this is the front entrance uh it is big <laughs> what can be expected um i'm going first time with you guys so enjoy this looks like a little like what would be a study area or like a little study nook or just a hallway i guess this is a dining room i can there's a lot of these statues everywhere um very big i assume big rooms this is a uh the kitchen which is a good good size it's not like abnormally large but it's not teeny tiny either and it's got a nice little breakfast nook uh which is gr great i was about to say fantastic and great put together there's this dark dingy hallway which is always fun here is a little living room Ooh, there's vlad and here is this the hallway that we were just in oh no this is another it's like this identical room across the way okay in here must be a bathroom yes bathroom in here must be another bathroom no it's a closet I want to say. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and here is a study, I'm guessing. And in here's a bedroom. Hmm, interesting. And in here is another living room area with a piano. So why don't we head on upstairs? <laughs> Where are the stairs? Uh, grand entrance. I love it. It's beautiful. Up oh, too far. Up here is another little sitting area. Uh, which is nice. Gonna probably have a lot of those, I assume. And here is a bedroom with its own balcony. What more could you want? Um, and its own bathroom. <gasps> wow. And then, um, I'm gonna get so lost. I just... Gnomes. Gnomes. I like gnomes. I kind of like them in The Sims 4. They're cute. Here is a sitting area <laughs> with a bathroom. I'm assuming there's gonna be lots of bathrooms and bedrooms and sitting areas. Here is another bedroom with another bathroom, um, which is awesome. Everybody gets their own bathroom. You know me in bathrooms. Here's a beautiful pink room. This is nice, like a teenager's room with their own big bathroom. This is totally gonna be a teenager's room. Okay, um, what's down this way? It's lying fast through here. Oh, a little girl's room. Oh, what? um, a nursery. I forgot the word for a second. With the balcony that I think meets up with the room over there. Oh, and its own bathroom cute and then across the hall is another bedroom with its own bathroom i love the color scheme i like how they had like red and then red in the bathroom very well thought out i'm assuming this is the master bedroom i'm assuming uh because it's got double doors which i assume are meant to be closets which is nice so big master bedroom with a big master ensuite and oop i hit my mic i have an itch that's why <laughs> there we go and a um giraffe what is this is this a giraffe i assume it's giraffe i make assumptions 
Um, is that it? There is this place up here, but it's not like meant for anything. Uh, I think I'll keep it that way. There is a severe lack of gym, <laughs> which I assume a house like this would have. Um, let's take a look out back for a second. So I love this whole like garden area. I'm going to keep it. These pathways and everything, it's too pretty not to. What I want to do is get into free mode or this mode and take a look at the floor plan. Okay, so we have bedrooms galore. And then downstairs, we have another bedroom and a lot of sitting areas that I might change. I don't know. This is adventurous for me, so hopefully it goes well. Um, hopefully I can do it. We'll see. I'm excited. I have so many ideas for this thing, so uh, let's let's have fun. Anyway, we're going to jump right into the reno now, so enjoy that. It's going to be so sped up, but not for me, but for you. All right, guys. See you then. Okay, guys, so I did it. Also, if you hear noise in the background, I apologize. My dishwasher is running for the first time in like two months. Um, I'll explain that later, but uh, if you hear that, I apologize. Hopefully, it's not too loud. It shouldn't be, um, but you never know. Things, the mic could just act weird and be like, I'm just going to pick up the dishwasher. Anyway, I did it. I freaking did it. I ran out of this mansion. Um, you guys are only seeing about, ooh, probably mm, half, maybe less than half, probably less than half at this point. Um, cause as of recording this right now, this voiceover, I have completed up until, I think I have like three bedrooms left to do, um, plus a little bit of outside work. So you guys are only seeing up until the kitchen, which is the first thing I do inside the house. So it's mainly just landscaping this part. Uh, it'll be a two parter. Um, it's just, they did such a fabulous, fabulous job on the landscaping of this house that I wanted to take my time with it. So, uh, it took me two hours real time to do it. So it was a long time. Also, I just, I love this house. I love it so much. It is, I rarely like mansions because I find them to be too spacious and not enough to fill them out, but this house is just like, it's gorgeous. It is one of my top two. Um, and I say that about like all the houses I renovate, but this one is just, it's nothing like I could ever build. It's very simple on the outside, which I like. It's not, they didn't try to go complicated with it and make it like super technical or whatever. So I kept the inside pretty much as to what you would expect with a house like this. It's very um, Tudor style. It's dark a little bit. Uh, not too dark. I tried my best not to make it too dark. Um, it's darker, but it's... Uh, wow, dishwasher. You really want to ramp up the noise now, huh? It takes like three hours for my dishwasher, dish, dishwasher to run through. Um, probably should have washed my dishes by hand like I do every single night. But tonight, I decided, you know what? No, for the first time in like two months, I'm going to actually use my dishwasher because as a single person, uh, I don't go through a lot of dishes. So washing them by hand is always the easier choice than doing the dishwasher because it used to be when I first like got the dishwasher and everything, I was like, well, it came with every other appliance, but I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to use it. But I used to just leave dishes in there because I never had enough for a full load and they would just go moldy and then I have to wash them by hand. So I was like, that's gross. I'm just going to wash them by hand. But tonight, I had enough dishes that I could actually turn my dishwasher on. Fun story. Anyway, back to the house. It's very proper. I built this house for snobs, if you really want to know. Um, it's got, uh, it's very clean. Um, it's not modern. It's very contemporary. But it is renoed. If you, <laughs> duh. Um, it's like redone. It's not old, crappy stuff. It's very much up to snuff, if you will. Um, the kids' rooms are very adult, honestly, and I feel like s snobby kids have that very adult room. There's some, like, tweaks for personality, but it's not, like, the wallpaper is pretty much all the same. Different colors, but same wallpapers, like, layout. Um, so, it's, it's very, very snobbish, um, but I really like it. Uh, the, the, the layout of the house is pretty good, I do change the walls just to sort of, I don't know, fit what I was sort of going for. Um, but they, I don't think I change any of the bedrooms except for the master bedroom. I 
like there were like seven there's something like i always catch myself i'm like you just you sound stupid there were seven bedrooms upstairs i'm pretty sure something along those lines and uh one of them was really small so i was like you know what i'll make the master bedroom a little bit bigger with a really nice walk-in closet so that's what i did um I made the master bedroom bigger. There are still tons of bedrooms. Don't, don't, don't fret. The butler also gets an amazing room, <laughs> like a room I would want to live in. It's, it's got a double bed. It's own bathroom. Uh, it's personal touches for a butler. It's very, very nice. Um, so whoever gets hired in this house, you are very, very lucky. <laughs> Uh, I really, really want to give this house to Lucas for my regs to riches, but there is no way he's going to make this much money. Uh, the season finale or the series finale of that Let's Play, I probably will just cheat him into this house. Although he's not very snobby because he started from nothing and worked his way up. I need like a really snobby house, like the land grabs need to move in here. Um... Like, this seems like something Nancy Landgrab would be for. Or the Goths. It's not quite as dark for the Goths as their house. Um, but it is very, very snobby. Also, they only have two kid, two or one kid. Something like that. And it's, there's a lot of bedrooms. Um, Landscaping-wise, oh boy, that was a task. And that's why I did it first. And by landscaping, I mean the floral stuff and, like, the presentation. I don't put any of the kids' play toys or... I changed the color of the pool, but I don't, like, decorate outside yet. I haven't even gotten that far in real life. Um, but I did do the landscaping, changed the pathway a bit, made everything a little bit newer. I didn't necessarily change some of the items. I just made them more white to make them look newer. <laughs> Does that count? Um, and then I went through, and as far as the, like, how I'm trying to explain myself, and it's not coming out quite correctly, the plant life, I didn't, what they had originally was dead genius, but it was all like dead stuff, but it was a lot of it. This, all of these little like mud dirt areas were all filled with stuff. I didn't want to do that because I felt like it was, it was so much and it was too much. It was going to look really overgrown and I didn't want that. So you see, um, some like the front two are very plant filled very overgrown but the back ones I put some plants in like little sections and then I do rocks but like I've complained about this so many times I feel like I should stop complaining about it but the sims 4 has rocks obviously but they're too big for a lot of the stuff that I want to do so I ended up instead of you'll see it but instead of doing like rocks because they're too big I did a rock path so it looks like little pebbles. I, th I think it looks cute. I don't know. You guys can be the judge. Anyway, it's it's a big, it was a big reno. I'm very shocked that I got through it. Um, not that I'm done yet, but it's definitely going to happen. There's no doubt in my mind that I will finish it. I'm, I'm having a real good time. Uh, usually for things like this, I get really bored uh, halfway through and you will, you notice it with me because... My effort in some of the rooms goes down significantly, but I don't know what it is about this house. I just, once I was doing the wallpaper and everything, I could picture what type of person was staying in what bedroom, so I could change it to their personality, and that made it so much easier for me. Like, the little girls, I wanted it to be very pink and very girly and very proper. I wanted it to be neat and tidy and everything in its place. And the teenager, I'm going to kind of do the same, maybe a little bit. Maybe she's a little bit rebellious. And then the the boy, the little boy is a scientist or wants to be a scientist, very into science, very smart. Um, again, very proper. And the teenage boy will be probably very proper, maybe into video games or something like that. I just, I, I like it. And the master bedroom is really nice. Very clean. Very, very clean. And by clean, I don't mean it's not messy. I mean, well, that because I didn't put any of the like little messy things that you can put in there but I did um it is just very proper I guess it's the right word I've been saying it but it doesn't sound right but it is very proper and it's made for proper people with proper money because this will be very expensive <laughs> very expensive I think it costs like 500,000 simoleons to put on the lot 
I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when it's done. It is going to be outrageous because, of course, I'm not going to spare any expense on the items. They're not going to be cheap items. Um, they're going to be expensive. And the kitchen is big, so it's got two stoves and two fridges, and they're the nice fridges. They're not the most expensive, but I don't really... I don't... The most expensive were too modern for me. So, I went a different direction. Anyway, enough about the house because you're going to see it anyway. I wanted to know how is your friday happy friday everybody um still thursday for me but that's okay um friday when you're watching this i will be in vancouver because i have to go into town which is always a pain because of traffic and it's, ugh, it's pain anyway speaking of traffic i was coming home from work today on thursday and i was stopped at a green light which sounds really weird but it was traffic and i witnessed my first like serious accident um, it was pretty, I, I don't think I've ever witnessed an accident. I don't think I've even witnessed a fender bender. I've been in one, but I've never witnessed one. I don't think. Let me think really hard. I, I've always, there's lots of times when I have seen the, uh, beginning or when an accident has just happened, but I've never actually physically seen the two cars hit. So this one, I'm going to explain it for you. So, the route that I take home is technically a highway, um, but it's not actually a highway. It's just a really busy road that th was probably the original highway, but then they built Highway 1, which is the Trans-Canada, which is the highway that goes through all of Canada. Um, and this is how everybody gets home, which sounds, yes, ridiculous, because isn't that super busy? It is. Um, anyway, so this highway, which was probably an old highway, if you go continue on that road, it merges into Highway 1, basically. So, I take that to go home. Um, so, there are three lanes on this highway. There are two regular lanes and one HOV lane. Now, an HOV lane is whether you have uh, two or more people in your car or you're driving an electric car and then you have to have a little thing that indicates that it's an electric car. Um, so, I was sitting, as a proper driver would, in the regular lane um, and... It's really busy here because there's a lot of lights and there's a lot of major intersections, so you tend to be backed up. And the light was green, but we weren't going through the intersection. Um, and the car in front of me and the car diagonal to me in front of me, so these two cars in front of me that were like side by side, had stopped to let this guy turn left on the other side of the street. He was going to turn left. Now, what that guy didn't see and what I saw was I'm assuming that a guy way in the back of my line went into the HOV lane because he was a single driver not driving an electric car, so he wasn't supposed to be there anyway. Um, I'm assuming he merged out of our lane and got into that lane. Anyway, somehow we ended up in the HOV lane, and he floored it through that intersection. Floored it. And, of course, the guy turning left didn't expect him and ran right into him. They hit he hit the side of his car, not even like T-boned the back end. It was the full on, pretty much the front of his car and sent him flying into a wall. Um, there's a wall there because the properties in Vancouver, um, it, this is on a hill. Uh, how do I explain this? The road going uh, adjacent to ours is up a hill. So like the road that guy was turning left onto is up a hill. So all these houses are up on hills and in order to get up there they had to build this wall where you have stairs up anyway it's hard to explain but there's a wall there um so this guy hits his car that car goes flying into a wall pieces come flying off nearly hit pedestrians and my light turns red so i don't end up going through the intersection I'm like okay i'm gonna stop i'm gonna see how to like make sure that everybody's okay um and six other cars stopped the pedestrians rushed over the two guys in the car got out of the car and were totally fine so i was like you know what I'm just gonna go home because I I couldn't really couldn't have done anything. Um, there's nothing more that I could do um, except say that I was a witness. And most people, if they need more witnesses, will put up a sign at the accident site and say we need more witnesses. So if they do that, I will call and be like I was there, I saw it. Um, but so did everybody else. Uh, I would say honestly, it was both their faults. Number one, guy in the HOV lane shouldn't have been in the HOV lane. Number two, even if he was supposed to be in the HOV lane, let's say he had a passenger, if cars beside you are stopped, do not 
floor it into an intersection. That seems really, really dumb to just be like, yep, no, I'm going to floor it through this intersection and pray that no one hits me. Like, ah. It's the same thing on this highway. They're doing construction on like our major highway, highway one. They're doing construction and uh, they cut off part of the HOV lane because it ends, but they ended a little bit earlier because they're trying to widen this this highway. And what happens is that makes traffic in the regular lanes back up. And so some people, myself included, have cut over to the HOV lane to pass all the people on the side. What I don't do is get into the HOV lane and then book it at 110 kilometers an hour and pray that no one pulls out in front of me because the odds are someone's going to pull out in front of me. So I just cruise along at like 50 kilometers an hour, if that. Um, also, the guy turning left was also at fault because he noticed that the two cars were letting him go and I'm sure they like actually physically waved him through and he didn't even proceed with caution he just went he was like okay thanks I'm gonna go like there's a third lane with a car that could be coming that was coming anyway it was it was it was not as traumatic as I thought it was gonna be probably because I saw the guys get out of the car and were physically okay um I didn't hear the crunching of the cars because I uh had my music on so I I always thought when I heard, when I would see an accident I would hear that that horrible horrible noise of car scrunching but I didn't hear it I just saw it and it was just like my jaw dropped to the floor I was like oh my goodness um luckily by the time I got home I was listening to the radio at that point um and they didn't even mention the accident, so I'm going to say it was cleared up by then. Um, hopefully, both guys are okay. They seemed physically fine. They both got out of the car. That guy who hit the wall, his car's gone. There's no way our insurance company is going to fix that. It was an older car, so that's a write-off. Um, I assume... My mom says that our insurance company... Because it's all one insurance company in BC, ICBC. It's stupid, I know. Um, but she had a similar accident where she was in, she was supposed to be, like, it wasn't an HOV lane, but she was in that lane, and the two lanes beside her were stopped, and she wasn't flooring it by any means, she was just proceeding with caution, but she ended up getting hit, and it was 25% her fault, because I guess there's a rule that you can't be moving if the cars beside you are going, like, you, sh you should be stopped, which seems dumb. Um, I would understand if that guy was just, like, mosey on by, being real cautious, but he, no, he was probably not technically quote unquote speeding because the speed limit there I think is 60 kilometers an hour. He was probably going 60. Um, but compared to someone who was stopped in the next lane, to me, he looked like he was going mighty fast. And uh, really, if, if any of you have never driven or are getting your learner's permit, or if you're in BC taking your N test or anything, L test, anything where you're learning how to drive or just want a tip on how to drive better do not do not if a if the lanes beside you are at a dead stop do not floor it through an intersection it's probably the best advice i can give you that accident could have been totally avoided if one the guy turning left didn't just say all right see you later suckers and turn and actually if i were turning left i would have got in front of those two cars, stopped, and then looked to see if anybody was coming through the HOV lane. That's what I thought was going to happen. I saw the guy zooming in the lane beside me. I was like, oh, okay, the guy turning left is absolutely going to slam on his brakes. He's going to be honking. The guy's going to swear, and they're going to go on their their merry way because um, that guy's going to be going real slow, turning the corner, not going to T-bone. He didn't technically T-bone. I guess he did T-bone the front end. Um, he's not going to hit that guy. Nope, nope, nope stupid me thinking that they would drive i don't know like sane people <laughs> neither of them did both of them made mistakes um mistakes were made both of them seem fairly uninjured so happy for that uh i don't think i would be sharing the story if either of them didn't get out of the car i probably would have stopped as well just for any reason help take pictures Another thing, if you ever get in an accident, don't just take pictures of the damage of your car. Take pictures of the scene of, so that ICBC or your insurance company, mine's ICBC, can picture together what happened. It, it helps your case, especially if you're trying to fight whose fault it is. Um, I've only ever been in one accident and it was the other guy's fault. It was a stupid parking lot accident. Um, 
he was backing out of a stall and I well I was backing out of myself first because I am a very cautious driver um never gotten a ticket been driving since I was 16 I'm now 23 never gotten a ticket um that was my only ever accident and so I'm super cautious when it comes to driving and so I double check and my mom is also very cautious and a very nervous passenger so she checked also and was like no you're all good and I was like I know I can see so I started backing out and then I see this guy backing out and he's gonna back into me I'm like what the hell so I stop I I don't slam but I stop and I honk my horn and I honk it again and I don't know what this guy was looking at if he even checked around him did any shoulder checks we be mirror don't even know um but he kept going and so I I tensed up because your first accident I thought it was gonna be a lot worse than it was um I did have to get my entire bumper replaced but that's another story um so I tensed up and I still have shoulder pain and he didn't even like tap me that hard but it because I was so tense and looking over my shoulder I somehow got injured I don't even know I don't even know how it happened but it happened um and I still deal with shoulder pain that case has been closed um but these guys I really hope they don't have long-term physical because it it was it was a hard hit um so we'll we'll see we won't see because I won't ever know I don't know these people so (laughs) anyway this is the only part of the inside of the house that I do for you guys in this part is the kitchen because I absolutely hate it then love it then hate it end up loving it at the end should have gone with the first wallpaper that I thought of which was the dark black one that came with parenthood it was the best option to be honest um anyway aside from seeing an accident today if you want stories I also was on my routine uh evening walk with my dog I do this every evening have for a long time now um was doing a route the same route I do I say every winter but the past or every fall winter but when it gets when it's light out I take a scenic route by some farms and stuff but when it's dark out I don't take that route because it's kind of on a very unlit road um so I opt out of that one uh, and I take more of a lit through the neighborhood sort of way and I was on that walk and I was just strolling along and I was like I uh was walking up a hill and felt something smush under my foot and I stepped on dog poo and you know what if I am in a field if I'm in a dog park and I'm walking in a dog park field I absolutely expect you know to step in dog poo I try my best not to but I have before but if I am walking on the sidewalk, I do not expect to step in dog poo. If your dog poops on the bloody sidewalk, pick it up. Oh, it's a big pet peeve of mine. Parks, I can sort of understand. Grassy areas can understand. Really hate people that don't pick up dog poo that's on somebody's lawn. I train my dogs not to poop on people's lawn. Like I will force them to wait until they go home and they can poop in our yard do not poop on people's lawn if they poop on someone's lawn i will pick it up until every last piece is picked up because i don't want that on my lawn because my lawnmower will go over that i know somebody doesn't want that on their lawn anyway who in their right mind lets their dog poop on the sidewalk the middle of the sidewalk i was in the middle of the sidewalk and i stepped in it and I had to wash my shoes. I'm getting new shoes tomorrow, so it really doesn't matter. But it's still like, do you have no morals? I have poop eggs for you. Would you like some? Because I carry them all the time because my dog poops wherever. <laughs> he's actually pretty good. He's He doesn't like to be looked at when he's pooping. So he'll usually go into a bush to the point where I cannot reach it. Um, but yeah. Anyway, this is where we will be ending off shortly. I think I... Oh, I do the clutter items, of course. I'm like, why is it? Why are we not finishing yet? Because I do the clutter items. Duh. Anyway, this was, I cannot believe how long it took me to landscape that yard. And you guys, I wish it only took me like 20 minutes to do, but it did. It took me so long. And there's so much pride there, though. There's so much pride in, in fixing this house because one, it's a beautiful house. And two, I did it kind of I haven't finished it yet but I will do it um I was nervous I recorded that intro I was like I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do this I'm 
kind of don't think so. Uh, we'll see. I might have to do a last minute smaller house and save this for something else. Maybe I won't like the layout. Maybe it'll be too big of a house and I'll get, you know, frustrated with using the exact same items ten times over in the house. Hasn't happened yet. Loving it. Loving the house. There's a lot of little sitting rooms and a lot of bookshelves, but I feel like in a house like this, it, it's acceptable. Anyway, um, the kitchen I, I like overall. At, in the end of things, I end up liking the kitchen. It was a little bit of a struggle, which is weird because kitchens aren't normally my struggle. They're usually my strong suit. Kitchens, and I'm really good at um, master bedrooms. <laughs> because I basically just do what I want, what I physically want in real life. But this kitchen was a little bit harder. Landscaping, not as hard as I thought. Something weird about this house, because it's backwards. Landscaping, I'm supposed to hate, but I wanted to do it first. Anyway, guys, we are going to finish up here. So if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you want to stay updated on all this nonsense, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And I will see you all in my next video next reno next week will be the fly through for this giant house i don't know how i'm gonna do that that's gonna be hard anyway guys see you in my next video have a great day guys bye